Hi everyone, welcome to the Missouri Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so our panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so please be sure to sign up for more. And this session is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com backslash Missouri. And with that, I'll turn it over to our first presenter and tonight that is Xavier University. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you so much. And um, hello to everybody. I just started my timer. So I wanna make sure I get my quick presentation in in six minutes, but my name is Tim Wilms. Um, I am the regional recruitment director uh, for Xavier University. We are in Cincinnati, Ohio, and we are a uh, Jesuit Catholic university. We're actually um, the fourth oldest Jesuit university in the nation. We're the sixth oldest Catholic university in the nation. So that, that uh, great heritage, that great tradition, that's something we're certainly very proud of. Um, as far as our undergraduate numbers, we have about 5,000 undergraduate students at Xavier. So the way I describe this is you kind of get the best of both worlds uh, at Xavier. You get the smaller size, uh, small size classes, average class size of 21, a 12 to one student to faculty ratio. You're going to get to know the people around you. Even better, you're gonna get to know your professors and they'll get to know you. Um, so we have a great campus community, a lot of great uh, small things going on at Xavier and big. Um, actually right now, Xavier is playing Butler in the Big East tournament. So if I look a little nervous, if I'm starting to sweat, that's what's going on. Um, but you get the D1 side of things uh, at Xavier. We're a, a, a big time uh, college basketball and other sports program. So you get the big and the small all in one. And not to mention, we are just about five minutes north of downtown Cincinnati. Um, so plenty of opportunities on campus and off campus for our students. Um, as far as Xavier goes academically, uh, we are a liberal arts Jesuit focused institution, which means that a lot of our students or all of our students rather will be um, taking core classes to pair with their major classes. And the nice thing about these core classes is it gives you a, a wider array of knowledge going into the working world while also, uh, you know, making sure that we prepare you um, for your major programs as well. We do have 90 majors and 60 minors at the university. Um, and um, like I said, you know, plenty of opportunities to get, your, to get to know your professors, to get to know the people in your classes. Um, I will also mention that every single one of our students at Xavier gets a success team. So that is uh, a st every student will have an academic advisor to work with you over your four years to help make sure you're taking the right classes to make sure you're gonna graduate on time. You'll have a financial aid counselor uh, who's gonna help you on the financial aid side of things. And then a success coach to help you with a transition from high school to college, as well as a career coach. Um, and that person's gonna help you obviously find internships, find jobs. Um, on that note, you know, one of the things that we do really well is help our students succeed while they're at the university. And then also we want our students to succeed after graduation. So what you see on the bottom left hand corner there, 98% of our students within six months of graduation are working full time uh, pursuing graduate studies. And then 2% of the 98% are doing a year of service. So that could be military service, that could be the Peace Corps, Jesuit Volunteer Corps, things like that. So that's obviously something we're, we're really proud of. And then at the bottom there, you can see we have five distinct honors programs. Um, so actually one of our oldest programs on campus is an, an honors program. It's a, a focus on the classics, so Latin and Greek philosophy. The other three uh, major specific ones have to do with business. They have to do with political science and comparative government, um, which some great opportunities there. Um, and then data science, so computer science and, and data analytics paired together. Um, and then we also have a general honors program as well, well where you pair your core classes with uh, at an honors level, pair that with your major. Um, so a lot of great stuff going on at Xavier, obviously academically, um, with plenty of access to opportunities for internships, for jobs right there in Cincinnati. Um, for folks wondering from St. Louis, from uh, you're looking at about a five and a half hour drive from Kansas City on the other side of the state, about an eight hour drive. Um, one of the big things, I only have a couple of minutes left already, but um, do wanna make sure you know that if you're looking uh, for a place where you can feel invested in what's going on on campus or invested in your university. If you're looking for leadership opportunities, Xavier is the place for you. We have 170 plus clubs and organizations. It's easy to get involved. We encourage all of our first year students to go and get involved. Um, and the nice thing about Xavier truly is it's definitely not too small, but it is small enough where everything is just about a five minute walk away uh, to everywhere you need to be. So your residence halls are all right there. We have a beautiful surrounding area and uh, where students will live on and off campus. 
and like I said, students can hop downtown whenever they need to as well. Um, the big thing you see there on the bottom right hand corner, Cura Personalis, that is care for the individual. And, and that is a Jesuit term that I think encompasses what we do at Xavier University. We want to meet our students where they're at, they're at and help get them where they wanna go and make sure they're successful in doing that. Some other things you see here, yes, indeed, there are free tickets to all the basketball games, uh, as well as soccer, volleyball, things like that. Or as parents say, already paid for, uh, for student tickets. Um, but we are in the Big East Conference. It's a conference that people know nationally. And also um, Xavier is a school that people know around the country as well. So that's something we're really proud of. Um, real quick, as far as the application process goes, we do a uh, December 1st priority deadline for um, some of our admission programs like nursing. That's one of a, 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 the top programs at the university. Anything in the sciences, anything in business, um, anything in education. Fun fact, we're the first ever Montessori undergraduate education program in the country. Um, anything in the social sciences, like I mentioned, political science um, or anything that way. And then um, anything communications, digital media, that's also a specialty for us. Um, so every student who applies is considered for a merit-based academic scholarship. Um, we also encourage all of our students to fill out the FAFSA by December 1st every year, as well as that get that nursing app in and any honors programs applications in by December 1st. We are a test optional school. We've been doing that for the last uh, couple of years and I would anticipate us continuing to be test optional. Um, and then just so you know, we are on our own Xavier app, but we have, uh, we're on the Common app as well. So plenty of ways for you to, to get in touch with Xavier University. And you'll see there our average uh, GPA is typically around a 3.6. Our average test score, if you choose to submit, is around a, a 25, 26 or a 12, 20. So um, that's my time. It's already been six minutes together. Um, so that's my information there. I am your regional recruitment director in anywhere in, in Missouri. Um, I'm your person. So I look forward to working with you throughout uh, your admission process. So thanks so much. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is University of Dayton. Hello, everybody. My name is Missy Bondi, and I am the Assistant Director of Admission and Financial Aid at the University of Dayton. And um, I'm also your um, representative for the St. Louis area. So super happy that you all could join us tonight. A little bit about the University of Dayton. We're 45 minutes north of Cincinnati. So not a hop, skip, and a jump from Tim. Uh, but we are a Catholic Marianist institution. Uh, we are a top tier Catholic Marianist research who focuses on educating the entire person. Uh, we really empower our students to learn, lead, and serve. This is our mission at the university. And really, our Marianist values are those of inclusivity, diversity, hospitality, community, working towards the common good, and finding your vocation. These are all things that you're going to find really permeate everything that you do at the university. Uh, and it's just a very great experience. Only about 50% of our students are Catholic. We have students of all different faiths, backgrounds, walks of life. So we are a friendly, welcoming campus. I always call us the baby bear schools. We have all the big school resources with a small school feel. So we're gonna be just right for just about everybody. We have 8,200 undergraduates, 11,000 total with grad and law. We have a true 14 to one student to teacher ratio with the average class size being 27. We don't have lecture halls in um, on campus really. Um, probably the biggest room on campus is actually our presentation space. Uh, so you're really going to get to um, interact with your classmates as well as your professors. Uh, we have no teaching assistants, so it's all professors. All of those who are um, really know their field are going to be teaching you. And then the retention rate. We have one of the highest in the nation at 91%. I always encourage my students to ask the retention rates of different schools uh, because it's something we all track. Um, we know that students who do come back for their second year have a higher tendency to graduate, graduate on time, and then graduate with less debt. Over 50% of our students come from outside of the state of Ohio with 43 states represented and we're about 10% international. We do have a very strong St. Louis contingent um, and so we love having students here. But the nice thing is, is you might run into somebody you know from St. Louis, but you're also going to get to know people from all around the world. And then we have over 80 different majors and minors to choose from. They're going to fall into one of these four schools. We are a direct admit school, so meaning you'll apply directly into the major that you want to study. 
our goal is to really find the best fit for you in terms of major, academics, and the like. Uh, we also do have numerous bachelor's plus master's programs. So if that's something that interests you, you could get your master's degree for a little less time, a little less money, but you don't have to choose that until your junior or senior year. One thing that I think is really great about our faculty is they really do encourage you to live outside their, your major bubble. So how many engineering schools tell you, oh, hey, you love music, go study that, go get a minor in that. Or you're interested in art as a business major, why don't you go take art classes or join an art club? That's really important to our faculty. They want you to be well-rounded. They want to educate the whole person. They want you to continue your passions even in their major. And then talk about fun. We have over 270 clubs and organizations on campus. They range from service, uh, social, recreational, academic, uh, you name it, we got it. If we don't have it, you can start it. Um, there's plenty of opportunities for you there. Uh, we also have um, a very active campus. Over 50% of our students play our club or intramural sport. We're also a D1 school. So here I am in, in uh, Dayton Arena, home of the Flyers. Uh, we are um, most well known for basketball, but we do have football, cross country, lots of sports. So it's something to always cheer on. We did get that national championship snatched from us last year. OB Toppin was leading the way. Um, and we felt that that national championship would have been ours. But unfortunately, COVID happened. And then what's also really unique about UD is that top right picture. That's our student neighborhood. We're one of the only universities that has a self-contained student neighborhood, meaning our students live and learn on campus with one another. We know that it makes everybody better and over 85% of our students live on campus all four years. One thing about being part of the Flyer family is when you meet other alums, they're not gonna ask you what major you were or where you're from. They're gonna ask you what street in the neighborhood you lived on. And then we're also considered one of the happiest campuses. And then I always tell my students, I want you to come to UD, I want you to stay for four years, and then I want you to leave. I want you to get out because I want you to get that career. I want you to go to grad school. I want you to do service. So within six months of graduation, 97% of our students are either employed, they're in grad school, or they're doing some sort of service learning. Of those who are employed, 97% are employed full time and 88% in their chosen field. And students do go back home to St. Louis to work. I do have a student currently working at Boeing. And then our tuition plan. So when you uh, get your financial aid offer in your senior year, we're not just gonna show you what one year costs at UD, we're actually gonna show you what all four years cost. So that way you can plan with peace of mind. Uh, you're automatically gonna be considered for scholarships when you apply. There's nothing extra you have to do, which is really nice. And then um, as tuition increases, we're also going to increase your scholarships and grants to lock in that net tuition. We are one of the first schools to do that, that net tuition guarantee. And then you're also gonna receive a textbook scholarship up to $500 a semester for textbooks, and we're never going to hit you with any fees. What you see on your bill, that's what you're going to pay. We're not going to add anything extra. And then here's your next steps. You can see when our deadlines are. We do have nursing. If you are interested in nursing, you do need to apply by November 1st. Our program is highly selective. We only take 25 students. Uh, we are test optional. We'll be test optional forever. So super excited about that. Um, and then if you have any questions, here's how to reach out to me. I will also put my information in the chat. And I would love to talk with you, love to connect with you. And hopefully I'll be seeing you this fall. Go Flyers! Thank you so much. Our next presenter is Miami University. All right, good evening, folks. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and keep on this Southwestern region of Ohio uh, University uh, group that we have here. So my name is Mitch Arnett and I am with Miami University. Uh, you'll see here that, uh, make sure my screen is sharing, yes, yeah, cool. Okay, so Miami is a public university. We are located in Southwestern Ohio in Oxford. Oxford is a classic college town with about 9,000 people living in Oxford full time. One of the biggest questions that I get is, why in the world are you called Miami? Why are you in Ohio? Uh, we are actually named after the Miami tribe that used to live in Southwestern Ohio. So that's why we get the name Miami. We are a public university dating back since 1809. So we have a long rich history behind us. Uh, you'll see enrollment wise, it's about 17,000 undergraduate students. So we consider ourselves large, maybe to medium large size. And uh, we also enroll roughly 2,200 graduate students. We're certainly better known for teaching at the undergraduate level. Uh, we don't have a law school, we don't have a med school, not a ton of PhD or graduate programs here. This is more of an undergraduate focused institution. We also require our students to live on campus the first two years of study. 
and we have about 98% of our students living within a mile of campus. So it is a true residential university. We represent all 50 states, DC and 85 foreign countries in our student body. So they are really coming from all over the globe. You'll see here, uh, we are a liberal arts university. So we do require our students to have a nice well-rounded experience. Uh, at Miami, we call it the Global Miami Plan, where students are gonna have very well-rounded uh, curricula at Miami. So no matter what your major is, uh, we, you don't apply to specific majors or divisions at Miami, you're applying to the university overall in general, and then we will review you for admission that way. All of our students are required to complete certain academic requirements, such as uh, the social sciences, humanities, life and natural sciences, math, and so forth. Okay. Uh, I also want to highlight here studying abroad. We have uh, just over half of our students deciding to study abroad through Miami, so it's very popular. Uh, we also have our own campus in Luxembourg. Luxembourg came to us as its own additional campus in 1968, and one of the great features with that program is it's open to all majors, and the tuition and fees cost the same in Oxford as they would in Luxembourg. Uh, undergraduate research is also pretty big at any given time. Roughly 2,000 students are doing undergraduate research. So again, the focus is on the undergraduates here. Five divisions, including the Department of Nursing. So we have the College of Arts and Science. Uh, just over 60 majors are housed within CAS. So if you're thinking about social science, humanities, math, all the foreign languages are housed in CAS. Next is creative arts. So if you're thinking about becoming an architect, graphic designer, an actor, uh, something like that, you would be in CCA. Next is engineering and computing. Uh, if students are admitted to Miami, they would automatically be admitted to engineering and computing. I know that that's, that is a little bit different at some universities. Next is education, health, and society. So if you want to become a teacher, an athletic trainer, dietitian, um, physical therapist, all those programs are housed there. Our school of business, we have eight business schools and it is direct admission. And then next is the Department of Nursing. Nursing is very competitive at Miami. It's really important that students uh, apply by December 1st and they indicate nursing as their primary major on the application. The average classroom size at Miami is about 30 students. The student to teacher ratio is 17 to one. And we have just over 110 majors and also just over 100 minors. Uh, I do want to highlight here in this box called University Studies. It's our fancy way of saying undeclared. So you could always come to Miami not knowing exactly what you want to study and declare a major a little bit over time, with the exception of nursing. That's the only one that you can uh, come in first year only. And we also have the pre professional advising or pre dentistry law and so forth. Okay. We have three honors programs at Miami. Not enough time to talk about that specifically, um, but definitely take some time later to learn about what, how they're similar and also how they're a little bit different. Uh, the Honors College uh, has some perks, including the residential life experience in the Honors College. We also have Prodesse, which is a Latin term that means to benefit. That's a brand new program for us this year. And then we have our presidential full ride. Campus life is very active, uh, just like all my uh, colleagues here talking about campus life, uh, such as the case at Miami. Housing is required on campus. Uh, students can choose among 47 different uh, residence halls, and we have just over 35 living learning communities for you to choose from. And these are themed environments for students to live with other uh, uh, students. We have just over 600 organizations at Miami. So being bored is not in our vocabulary. You know, don't rail out Miami because we are in a small town. Our students are very active. They're very intelligent. Uh, they really want to get involved in the full college experience. Um, so yeah, uh, 18 division one teams, 50 club teams. We do have about a third of our students active in intramural sports as well. Career services is pinnacle at Miami. We do have uh, roughly 4,700 organizations that come to Miami every year to recruit our students. Uh, just like I'm talking to you on Zoom, we have a lot of uh, potential internships and jobs that will come to Miami to recruit our students. 96% of our students are either employed or in graduate school within three months of graduating. Uh, so our students are doing very well. Tuition promise, which is what this means is if you come to Miami, you're going to keep the same tuition and fees locked in up to four years. Um, so your tuition will increase every year. Another great way to keep the college education as affordable as possible. You'll see the tuition and fees here. We are on the common application. That's the only way that you can apply for admission to Miami. Uh, we are test optional for fall 2021. It is very likely we will be test optional for fall 2022, uh, but that decision is coming here in the next few weeks. 
Um, information on the Merit Scholarship Grid. Uh, this is only applicable to the current seniors. So if anybody is a sophomore or junior, uh, just know that uh, we do update this grid a little bit later uh, in the summertime. And then last but not least is information on visiting campus. We are having in uh, on-campus visits uh, right now. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is the University of Cincinnati. Hi, everyone. Okay. Hi, my name is Jen Sloan. I'm from University of Cincinnati. Um, as you heard a little bit tonight, I am also regional, so I'm actually based in the Chicagoland area, but I work with students um, all over the state of Missouri, and I'm excited to be here. So um, you've heard a little bit about uh, Southwest Ohio. So I'm gonna round out that group tonight, University of Cincinnati. Oh, and you know what? I'm actually sharing the wrong presentation with you. I apologize. So I'm gonna change my screen sharing, but keep talking. So we are um, a large public research university with, and you know what? I'm just gonna keep going with this one. That's fine. We'll cover the, the same pieces of information. So uh, we are a large public research university with about um, 47,000 undergrads. So just under 47,000 um, and about 27,000 um, undergrads on our main campus. So we are made up of about um, 13 colleges with nine undergraduate colleges, including our College Conservatory of Music, College of Medicine, College of Nursing, College of Education, Criminal Justice and Human Services, our Lindner College of Business, our College of Design, Architecture, Art and Planning, um, our, let's see, College of Arts and Sciences and College of Design, let's say I said College of Design, Architecture and Planning, sorry, I'm, um, I'm gonna just go ahead with those. So we've got nine undergraduate colleges, 350 different majors to choose from. There is a lot. Students come to the University of Cincinnati for so many different reasons um, and to study so many different things. And we're excited to be able to offer so much. Our student to faculty ratio is listed here, but I think the important piece of information that I always like to share with students is that um, our average class size is gonna be much smaller once you um, get into your chosen major over 82% of the classes on our campus have less than 50 students in them. So a lot of times students are really concerned about what is that actually going to look like for me um, in the classroom and it's going to be much, much smaller than what students are expecting. These are some of the support services that are available to students on our campus, of course, academic advising, our learning commons. Um, one that I really like to highlight is our experience-based learning. If you know anything about the University of Cincinnati, the most important thing to know is that experience-based learning is something that 100% of our students are going to participate in. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Um, we are best known for co-op. We are the founders of co-op education um, in 1906 and continue to be a leader, um, top five in the country for co-op. Where that's gonna be different than an internship is a co-op is full-time and paid. And those two things are always gonna be true about your co-op experience if you're participating at UC. An internship could be those things, but doesn't have to be. Um, and for a co-op student who is participating in that, which is the case for about a third of the majors on our campus, for a 16-week co-op experience, you earn on average about $10,300. And most majors that participate will participate in five. So it's a huge earning and learning opportunity. If co-op isn't a part of your major, the experiential learning opportunities continue to be very broad and it just depends on what your major would be. So it may be more appropriate to participate in clinicals or student teaching research. We do several hundred million dollars worth of research in a year. So there's a lot to be involved in there. Uh, we are a very residential campus. One thing that you would notice in visiting, which you can do right now, we do have limited tours available in person. So um, continue to check our website and we'll continue to have availability into the summer. But 83% of our first year students live on campus in our 16 different residence halls. And when you're on campus, what you'll notice is that you actually can't drive through our main campus. So even though it's a big campus, you can walk pretty much anywhere in about 15 minutes or less. And what's really great about that for our students is it really creates a great sense of community and a very traditional on-campus experience in a very urban environment, 
because we are located about two miles from downtown Cincinnati. Some ways to get involved in our campus, we do have over 500 different clubs and organizations. So there are a lot of ways to find your fit. Um, and we hope that one of them will be a great opportunity for you. One of the things that I really like to share with students is that there's really not any one thing you have to love or wanna be a part of to find your fit at UC because students find so many ways to engage and really make this their home. We are a common app school. Um, that is the only way to apply to Cincinnati. Uh, we do require your official high school transcript. Your test score is optional. So this year we required it for nursing and early childhood education and our honors program. Outside of that, it was completely optional. If it's required as a part of your program, you do have to send it directly from the testing agency and one letter of recommendation. Uh, we do continue to be test optional going into this next year. I would say stay tuned this summer for a little bit more information about if there are any other programs that may either go test optional or move away from it, um, but hopefully not too many changes to that. You can see our tuition and room and board listed here. Room and board depends a little bit on the room that you are in. These are some of the scholarships that are available. The most important date to know at University of Cincinnati for admission is December 1st. That's our early action deadline. It is our priority deadline for any of our competitive programs. It is our um, deadline for scholarship consideration. No separate application um, is required for that. You just have to meet that deadline and our deadline for our honors consideration. These are some next steps that you would do um, once you have been offered your admission and are wanting to get started on your Bearcat journey. Um, and I really appreciate all of the time tonight. And if you have other questions, certainly feel free to let me know. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is the University of Tulsa. Thanks so much. Hi, everyone. I'm Teresa Bont with the University of Tulsa. And unlike the other presenters, I'm not in the state of Ohio. So we're moving to another state here. Uh, the University of Tulsa is a small to mid-sized um, private independent research university in the northeast corner of Oklahoma from St. Louis for a one hour direct flight or a five and a half hour um, uh, drive down I-44 through Rolla, Springfield and Joplin. From Kansas City, we're just a four hour drive south on I-49. Move that here. Okay. Um, TU is a residential campus. We're in a friendly urban setting with a cool vibe. With a total enrollment of about 4,000 students, TU offers the resources of a big university, such as financial resources, a wide variety of majors, opportunities for research, Greek life, and NCAA Division I athletics. Combined with the support of a top notch small private college, such as faculty mentors, a student success coach for each student, a supportive environment, and a tight-knit residential community. Fun fact, TU is the smallest school with an NCAA Division 1A football program. And even with our small size, we often compete in postseason bowl games, including one this year. With 3,000 undergraduates, TU students have individual attention throughout their TU experience, with a low student-to-faculty ratio and small class sizes. More than half of our students are from outside of the state of Oklahoma, with 266 students from Missouri. The majority of these students are from the St. Louis area, with Kansas City and Springfield having strong representation as well. Academically, TU is STEM heavy and has a professional practical focus, yet we provide students with a firm grounding in critical and creative thinking with a liberal arts curriculum for all students to engage in creative inquiry, historical interpretation and scientific investigation. You'll find about 60 academic programs in many engineering disciplines, computer science, including gaming and cybersecurity, and the federally funded uh, cyber core program, nursing and other health fields, natural sciences, pre-med, pre-law, business, psychology, art, music, and many others. The liberal arts structure allows students the flexibility to take classes of interest to them, often leading stu uh, students to double majoring or minoring across disciplines. TU students are required to live on campus the first two years. However, most students live on campus all four years, which helps create our vibrant residential community. We have all female, all male and co-ed options. We also have living and learning communities for those who are interested. We offer suite style options as well as on-campus apartments, townhomes, fraternity and sorority houses. 
We offer an all-you-can-eat dining option, a cafe in the library, and eight food venues in the student union, including Chick-fil-A and Einstein. TU students are academically focused, interested in social justice and community service, and are engaged in TU and Tulsa communities. There are plenty of opportunities for hands-on experiences, whether it's through faculty mentored research, pro bono work for local nonprofits, community service, professional internships, or academic competitions. MADE at TU is an acronym for Make a Difference Engineering for TU students to design and develop mobility aids, play equipment, and other adaptive devices for children with physical challenges. Pictured here is a Made at TU team from last year with two of the kiddos for whom they made adaptability devices so they could ride their bikes even with their limb differences. Interesting uh, to note that the second student from the left is a May 2020 TU graduate who attended Coriezu Academy in St. Louis. TU has over 200 student organizations on campus, such as student government, Greek life, LGBTQ communities, campus ministries, including a robust Catholic Newman Center, more than 20 multicultural organizations, music groups, professional and honor societies, and uh, intramural sports. TU offers free admission to TU students to all NCAA Division I athletic events. Each new TU student partners with a student success coach to help them articulate their imagined futures and develop uh, goals, navigate the campus, find resources for their needs, and develop college experience and professional development roadmaps to make the most of their time at TU. From career coaches to financial wellness coaches, TU is committed to helping students maximize their success. TU's stunning 200-acre residential campus is just minutes from downtown, entertainment districts, restaurants, minor league sports venues, and shopping. With a population of just under 1 million, the city of Tulsa has a cool vibe with an Eastern sophistication, a Southern charm, and a Western spirit. Tulsa has a strong arts and music scene and was recently featured in Rolling Stone magazine as a place where history, social consciousness, and barroom jamming make it one of the most fun places to visit. And Tulsa's gathering place, pictured here, made Time Magazine's list of the, of the world's 100 greatest places of 2019, and Natural Ge Geographic's list of 12 mind-bending playgrounds around the world. And it recently took first place in USA Today's Best City Park 2021, beating out St. Louis's Forest Park that took second. At TU, we take a holistic approach to the review process and recently announced we will continue our test optional policy for 2022 for admission and scholarship consideration. You can apply starting in July using the TU application or the common application. We are hosting visitors in person with some restrictions in place due to COVID. In addition, we have many virtual options as well. You just simply click visit from Tulsa's homepage to see all of the options available to you. I work out of my home office in Webster Groves and work with students in the St. Louis area, including St. Charles and the Metro East in Illinois. My colleague Hannah Smith is your rep if you are from any other area in, in Missouri. Please feel free to reach out to either one of us with any Tulsa questions. We are here to help. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is the University of Vermont. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Ashley Brown and I serve as the Midwest Regional Associate Director of Admissions on behalf of the University of Vermont. And uh, my position is a little bit unique uh, in the fact that I am stationed in the Chicagoland area all year round recruiting students, not only from the Illinois region, but the entire Midwest region as well. So uh, just a little bit about UVM. Uh, we have about 10,000 undergraduate students on our campus currently, and our average class size hovers just around 32 students. Students. You'll see here on the left hand side of the screen that about 73% of our students come from out of state and around 27% of those students are native to Vermont. Uh, this is something that is very unique to the University of Vermont. I think if you look at other institutions across the country, you'll see that out of state number being a little bit lower. But we do get a lot of interest uh, from students in the East Coast area, as well as uh, the Midwest region and the West Coast. So really, we, we sweep the entire United States with, with where we, we get students from. So all in all, we represent about 47 different states and about 67 different countries. 
We offer over 100 different majors on campus and some of our more popular programs include business, engineering, environmental studies and sciences, political science, and the health sciences as well. So if any of you students are interested in majors like nursing or pre-med, we actually have a level one trauma center right in the heart of campus where students are able to get a lot of great clinical work done and a lot of great internship work done as well. A fun fact about that trauma center, it's actually the largest trauma center north of Boston. So um, lots of great hands-on experiences there. This slide just talks a little bit about uh, the University of Vermont's distinctive qualities. And we like to say in our office that sometimes on the surface, some of those distinctive qualities can seem a little bit contradictory. So for example, the University of Vermont is very old. Uh, we were founded in 1791, and we are the fifth oldest institution in the New England area after Harvard, Yale, Dartmouth, and Brown. But we're also really new in the fact of we are constantly keeping pace with the changing world around us, whether that at be building new infrastructure on campus or instituting new academic majors, uh, we are incredibly abreast of the ever-changing society that we find ourselves in. It is also true that we are both big and small, so we're really big compared to some of those smaller liberal arts institutions across the nation, but we're also really small in comparison to some of those larger national research institutions as well. It is also true that we are both urban and open as well. Uh, so with us being urban, we are located in the beautiful city of Burlington. Uh, we are just about a 10 minute walk from our downtown area, which is filled with lots of shops and nightlife and restaurants for students. So just a really vibrant area where students can uh, relax and enjoy themselves. Uh, it is also true that we are open, so that means that our natural landscape is stunning. Uh, we are framed by the Green and Adirondack Mountains. We also sit right on Lake Champlain, which is the sixth largest freshwater lake in the United States. So students definitely do find a lot of comfort uh, in the fact of uh, being able to get out into nature and being able to uh, celebrate the beauty uh, that is in the state of Vermont. This slide just talks a little bit about our hands-on opportunities for students. We have a number of different hands-on experiences that students can take advantage of, whether that be an internship opportunity, a study abroad opportunity, or research or service learning. So we've got some statistics here on the left-hand side of the screen. We've got about 10,000 internships listed uh, in our career center that students can take advantage of. On the right-hand side of the screen there, you'll see some of the more recent internships that students have taken advantage of of late. Uh, but we do have about $200,000 available in internship stipend, uh, stipends, about $300,000 in research funding for undergrads with 40% um, engaging in research with faculty. Um, and we also have a number of service learning courses as well. So uh, that hands-on component and that experiential learning is definitely a critical part and component of a UVM education. Uh, this slide just talks a little bit about our living and learning communities and our housing system on campus. All first year students are required to live on campus for their first two years. Um, and with our living and learning communities, it's something that's really unique. It allows students to hone in on a passion that they have outside of their academic major. So say, for example, if a student is studying business, but also really interested in sustainability, they could live in the sustainability living and learning community, be living with students who have that same shared interest. They would also take a one credit hour course together, all of those students centered around sustainability in addition to doing activities centered around sustainability around the Vermont area as well. So a really unique um, setup to uh, housing at UVM. Um, as I said, all first year students do have to stay on campus. I'm sorry, first and second year students have to stay on campus. But uh, when you become a junior, you do have the opportunity to live off campus. We do have um, a lot of housing just across um, the Vermont, local Vermont area where students can, can live. This slide just talks a little bit about our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion on our campus as well. We operate out of six core common ground values. Those values are respect, integrity, innovation, openness, justice, and responsibility. And we've taken these values a step further and integrated them into our curriculum as well. So in order to graduate from the University of Vermont, you do have to fulfill those requirements that are listed on the bottom right-hand side. So you have to take a foundational writing and information literacy class, a quantitative reasoning class, a sustainability course, and two non-European diversity courses as well. We do have a number of campus identity centers on campus too um, that students can take advantage of. 
Uh, very quickly, a little bit about our admissions profile. Um, average GPA that we see coming from students hovers just around a 3.7. Um, historically, we've seen our middle 50% for ACE be a 28 to a 35. We do take a holistic approach to the um, application process and we are on the common application as well as the coalition application. So thank you all so much. Uh, if you have any additional questions, I am the uh, representative for the Missouri area. So uh, thank you so much for being here this evening. Okay, thank you to all of our presenters. If I could all have you just turn on your camera really quick and give me a one sentence answer to the question, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll start with Xavier University. Um, my short sentence is have fun. Um, my a little bit longer sentence explaining that is um, senior year, it can be really stressful. So while you're still a freshman, sophomore, junior, and you're looking for colleges, have fun in the process and really start to envision what could my life be like in the next four or five years, whatever, whatever you have. University of Dayton. So Tim stole mine, uh, but my next one would be visit. Visit the campuses, just like Tim says, see if you can see yourself there. So by being on campus, you can visualize if this is really the place for you. All right, um, my piece of advice would be to pay attention to all the deadlines because today you just listen to six colleges and every college has different deadlines and it can be a little confusing. So stay organized. University of Cincinnati? Okay, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> That's okay. I would say don't be afraid to ask questions. There are a lot of confusing things out there, a lot of different steps. Um, as was just mentioned, everyone has a different process. We are here to be helpful, so please feel free to ask. And my suggestion would be to stay true to yourself. You're going to be chatting about this and have this conversation with friends and with neighbors and with your parents and your aunts and uncles and everybody's going to want to talk about it and you have to listen to your own heart and really um, try to remember what's important to you and when you are visiting those campuses and just see like what speaks to you not necessarily what your mom says or your dad says or your friends say what speaks to you and just listen to that voice inside your head. Yes, and my advice would just to be to use your resources, you know, use us as admission reps, don't be afraid to reach out, use your high school counselors, you know, um, just use all of the resources available to you that's going to help you to get through uh, filling out those applications and just through uh, the entirety of your senior year. So. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. When this window closes, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Also, this is just one of many sessions being hosted. So be, to sure, be, sure, be sure to sign up for more. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as others at strivescan.com backslash Missouri. And with that, have a great night. Thank you everyone. And thank you again to all of our presenters.